Hi, welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is the 2012 G.I. Joe Convention box set. Now, uh, the G.I. Joe Collectors Club uh, held their annual G.I. Joe Convention uh, for, I think, 20 years, and from beginning in 2002 up until 2018, uh, which was the final convention year, um, they had a box set of 15 exclusive figures that they would produce uh, for sale at the show. And there would be uh, a limited number of these sets also available uh, for online purchase from non-attendees. So I had never been to a G.I. Joe convention. And when they first started making these sets, they didn't feel very essential to me. It was a lot of, a lot of uh, repaints. Uh, they weren't really introducing anything any new concepts and I guess even at the time when these sets started coming out in 2002 even though I was I was into G.I. Joe at the time I wasn't into it enough and uh to buy these box sets which were you know a couple hundred dollars like they probably ranged from two to three hundred dollars in those early years and yeah that was just it was too much to, for me when there was no no essential figures however when uh, what we call the modern era of G.I. Joe started in uh, 2007, and I was really uh, collecting, I was pretty much a completist collector. I wanted all the unique characters, and um, I had the financial means to purchase some of these more expensive figures. So 2012 was actually the first year that I said, you know what, I'm going to buy this convention set. It was only the third set that they had done in the modern era. So even though the modern era has started in 2007, the uh, Collectors Club didn't uh, embrace it right away. They were still making like the vintage style figures with the O-ring elastic that held the figures together. They were a little smaller, a little less detailed. So uh, yeah, I think it was 2009 when they got on board with the modern era. They did their first set and then they went back to the vintage style for the next year. Um, and then after the 2011, they did a Mission Brazil set, which I wish I got because now it's very expensive. Um, and then 2012 came along. And 2012, uh, I thought, was pretty a critical set because it had so many figures that we didn't already have. So that particular set, I've got the set here. So it was called uh, Operation Bear Trap. And it featured the October Guard. And versus the Iron Grenadiers. And all the uh, October Guard figures in here had not been previously released uh, in the modern era. Some um, maybe never before. And even the Iron Grenadier figures, some of them were figures we hadn't got in the modern era. And even the Troopers were uh, kind of a, a unique twist on the Iron Grenadier Trooper that we had before. So almost every character in this, in this set, I felt, was pretty essential. So... I took the plunge, and I remember initially they uh, when they went up for sale for non-attendees, I, I clicked it and I put it in my cart, and then once it showed me how much the shipping would be to Canada, and it did the conversion, I was like, oh geez, I don't think I can do it. I wasn't ready. I hadn't been spending that type of money on action figures, so I said, you know what, I'm going to sleep on this, and I'll decide tomorrow if I really want to do this. Anyway, I woke up the next morning. Um, to see all kinds of angry people on the internet saying that this convention set had went up for sale and sold out in a matter of an hour or so, and everybody that wanted it wasn't able to get one, and now these figures were going to be impossible to get and super expensive. And I was really kicking myself. I didn't realize how uh, fortunate I'd been to actually get one in my cart, because a lot of people didn't even get that far. So yeah, I really regretted not buying this set. Um, and then I guess the club had so much demand for this particular set that a couple of weeks later, I think it was, I got an email that said they were going to go back and do, you know, a high increased numbers than they had normally done in the past. And they were going to give people a second chance to order one of these. And so that time I jumped at it. It was still very expensive. Uh, I don't remember exactly. I think in, for Canadian funds in the ballpark of 500 bucks, probably a little bit more actually. But uh, nowadays when you see this set, selling online uh you know the whole box set sells for you know a thousand bucks uh american which would be 
about 1300 Canadian. Um, so yeah, I'm glad I purchased it when I did because it would be very hard to, to track down on the secondary market. Now, when the club was releasing these sets, I don't think at the time they uh, published or advertised how many, uh, how many of the sets they did make because you know, some people were curious just how limited uh, these were produced. And yeah, as far as I know, they never gave any sort of official record. Um, however, when the club came to an end at the end of 20, 2018, this was the, the final issue of their club newsletter that went out that year. And in, and in here, they did a checklist of all the, uh, the convention sets they released. And so here you'll see the 2012 October Guard set. And in here, they provided uh, some information about each set as well as the number that they created. So it says there was 1,100 of these box sets created, which compared to the Mission Brazil set the year before, there was only uh, 500 of them made. So, and uh, yeah, same thing the year before, 500, 500. So uh, yeah, this was a, a big step up to go from 500 to 1,100. That just shows you the kind of demand this set had at the time and still has today. So right now I've got all the figures out of the set. So there's not much to show you in the box, but I will quickly uh, pop it open here. So I take the lid off. And inside, I just have the, the foam insert where all the figures fit, um, as well as there's a convention pin that came with every, every set. Uh, I don't know what to do with those things, so I just leave them in the set. Uh, and otherwise, it came with a comic book that featured all the characters. It came with file cards for all the characters. It came with accessories. Now, all that stuff I've taken out of here because I store all that stuff separately. The only other thing that I keep in the box here is the uh, certificate of authenticity that comes with each of these things. So, you know, this doesn't mean a whole lot, but uh, they give you one every time you buy one. So, anyway, that's what I've got in the box set. So, yeah, we'll take a look at the figures. But before I do that, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you're already a G.I. Joe fan and you'll, you know a lot of the basics. But uh, I know I've got some friends out there, like my buddy Miguel. He's probably watching this just to support me. And he doesn't really know a whole lot about G.I. Joe. So this set, uh, as I said, features the October Guard and the Iron Grenadiers. So just to give you a little context about what those are, um, the uh, October Guard, I will simplify it by saying they are a Russian special ops team, kind of the equivalent of G.I. Joe in Russia. Now, I say I'm simplifying that to call it Russia because at the time, Russia was part of the Soviet Union, and even all the characters in the October Guard weren't from the Soviet Union. They were from other uh, nations that were included in the Warsaw Pact, which was a treaty that ran from the 50s to the 90s. So there was uh, countries like Albania and Bulgaria and stuff that were included in there. So yeah, these, these characters that were part of the October Guard might have hailed from Bulgaria, the, the USSR, whatever. But I'm just going to call it Russia to simplify things. So yeah, they're basically the Russian equivalent of G.I. Joe. And they've been part of the brand since the earliest days, really. Um, they appeared in the animated cartoon, and they appeared in the comic book starting with issue six. So, you know, the G.I. Joe comic book ran for, you know, over 100 issues, several years, and yeah, the October Guard introduced issue six very early on. So uh, those characters have been part of the mythology of G.I. Joe since, you know, the very beginning practically, and yet none of the characters get any love in the vintage toy line. Because like some of the main characters from the October Guard, uh, like uh, Horror Show or Breckoff, these guys didn't get figures. The only guys we got in the vintage toy line, and I don't have the vintage figures here to show you, but um, the only uh, guy, it was in 1991 that this character called Red Star came out. And so this is the modern era version of Red Star. Uh, yeah. So he was, you know, his file card described him as a member of the October Guard, but he was not one of the members that we were super familiar with. Um, and then the following year, I believe 1992, we get, again, a version of this character. So this guy is called uh, Big Bear. Yep. So these were the two guys that we had in the vintage G.I. Joe line. 
But since they came out in the 90s, I had actually stopped collecting by then. I only collected G.I. Joe from 82 up to 1990. So when these guys came out in 91, 92, I was already out of the brand. So these figures here, um, it's cool that we did get modern era versions of these guys uh, down the line. But neither of these two figures are from the box that I'm going to show you. These just happen to be two other members of the October Guard that we did get separately that came on single cards. And uh, while I'm talking about them, I will show you the third member. This here is Dragonski, and he is like the flamethrower. And this character, we did not get him in the vintage toy line at all, but we did get him in the modern era, and he was not included in the set. He came separately. So these are the three members of the October Guard you could still get, even if you didn't buy this box set. So that's the October Guard. As for the Iron Grenadiers, so Destro, if you know anything about G.I. Joe, you should know Destro. He was introduced in 1983, the very second year of G.I. Joe toys. He was introduced very early in the comic. And, you know, you could kind of describe him as, you know, I think a lot of people treated him as Cobra Commander's, you know, general or right-hand man or whatever. But he was actually an arms dealer who didn't really work. He wasn't part of Cobra, but he sold Cobra its weapons. And he was often seen hanging out with uh, Cobra High Command. But he did have his own, his own thing going on. He had Mars Industries. And they really focused on that in the first live-action G.I. Joe movie, Rise of Cobra, before there was Cobra. They focused on Destro and Mars Industries were kind of the, uh, the bad guys of that first movie. So this is what Destro looked like when he first came out in 83. That's the look that he had in the cartoons. That's the look most people associate with him. However, in uh, 1988, they established a new look for Destro with a gold chrome head. I don't know if you can really pick up the difference there, but originally he was silver. Switched to the gold chrome. This more regal outfit with the red cape and the, the sword and the sheath. Again, these aren't the vintage figures from 83 and 88. These are the modern era representations of those looks. But yeah, so this is when Destro really decided to have his own his own army, essentially, which was the Iron Grenadiers. They all dressed in, or at least most of them dressed, in these sort of colors, the black, the gold, the red. And it kind of created a whole new faction besides G.I. Joe and Cobra. Every year they added to the Iron Grenadiers team. So yeah, there was a whole bunch of them in the vintage line. So these guys here are the, the bad guys in the box set that we're about to talk about. So without further ado, now that I've kind of set this up for you, let's take a look at the figures. So first up, we're going to take a look at Colonel Brekoff. And I'll just warn you in advance, I'm probably going to butcher some of these names. Uh, a lot of them I've never heard spoken. Uh, and maybe some of them back in the cartoon when I was a little, little kid. But uh, yeah, you can see his name on his display base there. So... I might be wrong, but that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Colonel Brekoff. Now, this is version 3 of this character. And he is described on his file card as the October Guard's uh, battlefield officer. But he's the guy I associate as their leader. He was usually seen as the leader of the team in the, the comic books in the 80s before he was replaced. Uh, he was killed and Red Star replaced him. Um, but yeah, so there was no vintage figure not in the uh, the the vintage line is considered to have run from 1982 up till 1994 because after 94 that's when the line stopped kind of went on a hiatus and then we got new styles of figures like the sergeant savage or the gi joe extreme which were taller figures less articulated however gi joe did have a brief revival in uh, 1998 um they released some figures in three packs a lot of them were repaints of old figures but they did give us some brand new characters and in those three packs is where we got a lot of members of the october guard for the very first time so version one of him came out in 1998 it was a vintage style figure it matched up with all the figures from 82 to 94 but he's still not really considered to be part of the vintage line um, a second version of him was released in 2005 and that was uh, during what uh, we often refer to as the New Sculpt uh, era, which ran from about 2002 to 2007, 2008, something like that. And most of those figures, um, did uh, they fit into the vintage line too. 
So there was another version of this guy in 2005. I don't have either of those. I don't have either of those here to show you. But uh, this version here is, I would say, by far the best looking Brekhoff we've ever gotten. As I believe those other ones were essentially repaints of Red Star. So here you'll see there's lots of nice detail with him. Very nice looking outfit. The majority of that outfit is actually borrowed from a Destro figure that was released as part of the 2009 Rise of Cobra line here. So you see those kind of flared pants, the pantaloons or whatever, and the, the, the popped collar on the jacket. That's all right from this Destro. Now they did change up his arms, so he's not exactly the same figure from the neck down. Um, and then the head, it's a brand new head. And this set here, um, this box set, we actually got a lot of new heads. This is probably the year we get the most new heads, um, which is great because that's really what makes the characters unique. I don't mind if they reuse parts for their legs and their heads or their bodies and their arms and their weapons, but when a character has a unique head, that really makes them seem like a unique character here. And you see his hat is removable, and he's got kind of a pretty unique hairstyle. I don't think you would use this head for any other Joes. I'm pretty sure it never was reused for anybody else. And yeah, I like it a lot. This is a very cool figure. And there you go, so that's Colonel Breckoff. So next up, we have the October Guard Sniper. And her name is just Dana. At least that's how I pronounce it. Maybe it's something different, as you can see there, D-A-I-N-A. -A. But Dana is the easiest way to say that. And so, yeah. She here features um, mostly Lady J parts. I think it was at least the, the torso and the arms. And then her legs actually come from a snake eyes. But like Brekoff, she had a brand new head. And I think this was a unique helmet for her as well. But yeah, so it's very nice that we got a unique head for her rather than just a repaint of Scarlet or Lady J or something. And yeah, I really like that helmet too. Uh, it really matches up with her look from the comic books. And yeah, she looks pretty great. So this is, um, like I usually, when I tell you that this is version two, version three or whatever, I usually get that information from yojo.com, which is probably the best resource site for G.I. Joe figures. But this is one of those cases where it's up for debate what version of this character it is. Because um, so I think this is Dana version two by Yojo standards because there was a version of her released in 2005 who and she had a little uh little kind of fur hat little russian style fur hat and she was also released as part of those comic packs that uh we got the first break off or that we got uh 2005 break off um but the first version of this character was actually released in 1998 again similar to break off it was in those uh, kind of 1998 anniversary multi-pack of figures but they called her Volga. She had like red hair and a gray camo suit. And if you didn't know that Volga and Dana were supposed to be the same character, Volga was like her code name. So if you go to Yojo, they would say it's Volga version one. And then the 2005 figure was Dana version one. This is version two. And those are the only Danas they have listed. But you could arguably say that this figure that we got from the club a couple of years later would be uh, version four because this is also Dana, it actually reuses the head sculpt that we get there. But this is feature, This features her look from when she joined G.I. Joe and she took on the code name Verona. So Volga, Verona, and Dana, it's all the same character. But I think this is probably the best version of her out of all of them. So there you go, that's Dana. So next up, we have the Iron Grenadiers paratrooper, Stormovic. And this is version two of this guy. The first version was released in 2005 in one of those comic multi-packs. And so yeah, this guy's hat is not removable. It's part of his sculpted head. And it is a new head yet again. Now the rest of his parts here, they're kind of a mix of a couple people. Um, he's got some Sergeant Stone, some Destro, and even some Shadow Tracker parts. Um, but with that much mix, you don't really look at them and, and think of any one of those particular characters. Uh, the build works really well for him. I like the paint job. Even that little detail of giving him a striped shirt underneath is really great. And yeah, and the unique head sculpt. 
really makes him stand out as a new character. And again, this is a head sculpt that the club did not reuse. Uh, oftentimes when the club put the money into making a new head, they would try and find a way to reuse it. But yeah, I don't think uh, really any of these October Guards heads got reused. So these characters do look really unique on your shelf. So yeah, there you go. There's Stormovic. Now this is another guy whose name I will probably butcher. But this is the uh, October Guards Infantryman. And I'm going to say Shrag? Shrag? Shrage? I don't know. But anyway, this is version 2 of this guy. Version 1, pretty much like everybody else. Came out in 2005 as part of the uh, the comic packs. And this is an int this is kind of based on that look, um, except it has he has a different color outfit from the 2005 figure, but otherwise they look pretty similar. Um, and this guy has a mix of parts again. He's got some parts of uh, Dusty and Snake Eyes as well as Red Star. But like all the other guys, he's got a brand new head. And it really helps this guy look unique. And I really think this guy looks cool. Like he looks like a Russian soldier. He doesn't look like other figures on my shelf. Yeah, and I'm not getting too far into the articulation on any of these figures or anything like that. But you know what to expect if you have any of these modern era G.I. Joes. The articulation is pretty much the same on all of them. And I did rant for 13 minutes at the start of this video before I even started showing you the toys. So i got to be kind of brief so this thing isn't super long. But yeah, there you go. There is Shrag. So next up we have the October Guard Commander. That's how they describe this guy. This is Iron Bear, not to be confused with Big Bear. So this guy here, he's a mix of parts, uh, including Duke and the jacket is mostly from like uh, Arctic Snake Eyes, but he has a unique head and his hat does come off. There you go. It's a uh, you know, pretty basic head, the kind of head they could reuse for other figures, but I don't believe they ever did. And the hat fits it really well. It's kind of a small head, actually. I'm glad they didn't reuse this on too many guys. It works. It works for him, but yeah, it might look odd on some of the other characters. But this guy here, this is the only guy in the set that this is version one. We've had never had another version of Iron Bear. And, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this was a newly created character. I don't think he'd been established in any of the comics or cartoons previously. He was featured in the comic book that came with the box set, but I think that's the first time we've ever seen him. But he's a pretty great figure too, and he, he blends in well with the rest of the team. And yeah, I like him a lot. So there you go, that's Iron Bear. So the last figure we have to review on the October Guard side of things is their heavy weapon specialist. And this is Horror Show. And this guy, probably for a lot of people, is the highlight of the set. Um, it's a figure I like a lot. This is the guy I most think of when you say October Guard. He was the guy that was the most visually interesting. He was always drawn like to tower over all the other characters. And this figure does tower over the other characters. It's a, it's a very tall and a big bulky figure. And yeah, he has a brand new head, which this guy really does need. He's got that tight uh, cap around his head. It looks exactly like he looked in the comic books. He looks great. I love it. And the jacket and everything, that all works. It, again, looks like how he appeared in the comic books. And uh, the body, though, that's all reused parts. So he's got uh, a mix of Night Adder and Shadow Tracker parts. But besides that, um, I, I'm pretty sure the uh, like all the stuff that comes off, the, the web gear that includes this, 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 I believe most of that is all new for him as well. Like this skirt we never saw in any other characters, which really makes him look like he has that big long jacket. Um, and yeah, he looks great and doesn't look anything like Shadow Tracker or Night Adder. But they had to use those guys because those are kind of taller figures, so it really gives Horror Show his size. He comes with a couple of guns there that he doesn't hold very well, including this big bazooka. Looks great. Now my main issue with this figure is you can maybe see his legs. They just don't uh, quite, it's like the lower legs and the upper legs don't quite match. Uh, I'm not sure what the problem was. They might have used upper legs of Shadow Tracker and the lower legs of, uh, of Night Adder. Um, but yeah, the knee doesn't quite allow the leg to lock you know, straight. So when I put him on his display base, he's always leaning back like that. 
and it doesn't help that his he his legs have gotten kind of loose over the years because he's always toppling over. So he's a figure I usually have to lean, uh, put at the back of the shelf so he can lean against the wall because he does topple over very easily. And I don't really think there's a way to prevent that just because of the way he was constructed. So that's a huge bummer, but he looks awesome. And if you wanted to either display him on the back of your shelf or sit him in a vehicle, or maybe you can come up with a way that he doesn't topple over so much, this is a figure you want to have in your collection. So yeah, there you go. This is Horror Show. Okay, so let's move on to the Iron Grenadier side of the set. So this here is a basic Iron Grenadier figure. This figure is from 2008, and it is based on the original 1988 Iron Grenadier. So this is Destro's standard trooper. He did have pilots and frogmen and all kinds of other things later, but this is his most basic trooper type. So this figure was not included in the set. I just wanted to show you um, what the Iron Grenadier looked like. Um, he shares a lot of parts and some like color similarities with the Iron Grenadier Destro. And this same figure that came out in 2008, um, they all released, they very early on started releasing variations. So this is like a purple, purplerized version. It was also released in 2008. And then there was kind of a cool heavy weapons version of the Iron Grenadier released in 2011. So you'll see here, this is a variation of the Iron Grenadier. This is the first time that they really changed up the look. So he's got the same helmet, although it's got a really cool new uh, paint job. It's kind of hard to showcase here because it's kind of forced to look downward. But they added all this big heavy armor on them. And yeah, so those are the Iron Grenadiers. So this box set here in 2012 gave us a bunch of new variations of this trooper. So let's take a look at the first one. So this figure here is just called Iron Grenadier. And you could say that this is Iron Grenadier uh, version 9. That's what, that's what they call them on yojo.com. But on the file cards for these different variations of the Iron Grenadiers, they do kind of give them um, some specific names. So this guy is just called the Iron Grenadier Trooper. So you could consider this version 1 of the Iron Grenadier Trooper because he is quite different from basic Iron Grenadier. You'll see he's got a different outfit and his color scheme is quite different too. So this, I think, is a very cool figure. I love the way this guy looks. He's got the standard Iron Grenadier helmet, which is a great design in the first place. But then he has uh, you know, this kind of sweeping skirt. I don't know if I would call this more regal than the standard one because all the Iron Grenadiers um, look like they're kind of fancy and not so much in combat outfits, but I really like this look. And this figure here, it's it's a mix of four different Cobra Commander parts, actually. But the one that stands out the most um, is from this Cobra Commander figure. So right away at a glance, you notice this... Uh, the skirt piece and the kind of the flowing it almost looks like wind blown the way that piece is uh, shaped whoops so yeah that comes from cobra commander yeah. and now i've lost cobra commander's helmet but uh yeah so you see there so that that's where this piece comes from as well as like his torso but the legs you'll notice the legs are quite a bit different but those do come from another cobra commander and I think the, the arms are different as well, and they're from a different Cobra Commander. So yeah, it's a great figure. I love that you get four of them. Some people might think, well, that's kind of a ripoff. These sets are really expensive, and yet you get four of identical figures. But the thing is, whenever the club does that, they do it for trooper types. And a lot of Joe fans would be really annoyed if you only gave them one of this type of trooper in an expensive box set because a lot of fans want to display these kind of troopers in groups and they would have to buy either multiple sets or they have to seek out just this one figure on the secondary market, which would get quite expensive. So I actually think it's really cool that the club has given us multiple versions of this guy. And four is a nice little squad size. Um, 
you know, when they go overboard like that, like if you watch my review of the Battle Force 2000 set where they gave us uh, eight or nine bats, which were all the same, that was kind of overkill. That did feel a little bit like a ripoff. But to just get four of these guys, it's a nice little squad and a really cool design. So I really like the Iron Grenadier Trooper. On yojo.com, these guys are considered Iron Grenadier version 10, but the file card describes them describes them as Iron Grenadier specialists in heavy weapons. So you could say that these are the Heavy Weapons Iron Grenadier version one. Now these figures here are a pretty basic construction. They just took the same old Iron Grenadier head and they put it on a Destro body. Now I actually don't have um, the Destro, which was version uh, 25 from 2010. It was based on his look from the cartoon series Resolute. And I don't have that figure. But uh, yeah, it was a pretty cool Destro. It was very tall. This is a big, tall body. Um, like just to bring him up one of those other guys again, you'll see he's quite a bit taller than the other Iron Grenadiers, like in most of the other standard figures. And yeah, it's a really cool design. Like it, uh, it kind of has like a Nazi-esque look to it. And, uh, and even though the Nazis were jerks, they did have some pretty cool outfits. And yeah, these guys look like some sort of Nazi stormtrooper to me. And yeah, they just look really cool. They did have a couple of options of weapons. Um, so this guy, you'll see I have him displayed with the, the huge machine gun here. And this guy I have displayed with the, uh, the rocket launcher bazooka. But yeah, these guys are probably my favorite variation. And you get two of them. So... I don't know, it might have been nice to get three of these guys and three of the gray guys, but uh, I, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, these I think this is the coolest Iron Grenadier variation in the set. So this is the Heavy, heavy Weapons Specialist. Now this is the Iron Grenadier version 11, or you could call them the Iron Grenadier Guards version 1. So again, same old helmet, but an, another unique paint job with kind of the gold faceplate and the red visor which looks pretty cool. It's different from the other guys that had a uh, red red faceplate and black visor. So it makes this guy stand out. Um, again, a very like, regal looking outfit. Uh, it's good for a guard. The fact that they're wearing red kind of you know, reminds me of the Royal Guards from Return of the Jedi. It's a really cool outfit. It does share parts with this Cobra Commander, same as the other guy did. But... The other Iron Grenadiers had the same skirt piece with the kind of the short skirt and then the, the flowing back end where this skirt here is longer and just hangs flat. And this skirt, was this was the first time we saw it, so it was unique to these figures, but uh, the club didn't create it. It was actually intended to be part of an Arctic Cobra Commander figure that was due to be released, but then Hasbro never released it. So the club was able to use that uh, lower cloak for these figures now what is kind of cool is the collector's club did eventually release that arctic cobra commander uh years after it was intended to be released by hasbro so here's that version of cobra commander as it was originally intended but this is where you'll see that skirt piece come back into use so now cobra commander is the second guy to use it but originally it was designed for him and these guys borrowed it but anyway it's a really cool design I do love these Iron Grenadiers. They seem perhaps a, a little short and squat. It's something about that long skirt with the shorter figure. Um, it's probably my least favorite design of the three types that we got here, but it's still very cool. And had I not bought this set as one complete set, I would definitely need to seek out one of each of these individual Iron Grenadiers because I think they're all very cool. And the last figure from this 2012 box set is Voltar, and he is the Iron Grenadier General. The original was released in 1988, and this is version 2. So this is the only time he's ever been updated from the 88 original. And uh, yeah, this is another great figure, and this is one I really wanted. Um, I had the original 88 Voltar. I liked that figure a lot. Um, and so yeah, very happy to get this one. He does have a brand new head. So this is the first new head on the Cobra side. 
But that makes total sense. I'm almost glad they didn't do new helmets for the Iron Grenadiers because I like the consistency of them all having the same helmet. But, uh, yeah, does I believe this helmet comes off. Ugh. Yeah. So there you go. So there's Voltar head. It's a unique sculpt. Now, on the vintage figure, he had a helmet like this that covered up one eye, and it was just part of the, the whole sculpt, so it wasn't removable. So that's kind of a nice new feature that we get that now. Um, the body does a pretty good job of representing how Voltar looked. This one here is a mix of parts. The upper body is most recognizable as the accelerator suit that uh, Ripcord and Duke wore in the G.I. Joe live action movie. Uh, but then he's got beach head legs. And uh, yeah, for a weapon here, you'll see he's got some, looks like some sort of sonic cannon. He's got the sheathed sword which is pretty common on Iron Grenadier figures, such as Destro and the basic Grenadier Trooper. So very happy with this figure. The only uh, disappointment, and this seems like an obvious miss, is that Voltar, he came with a vulture in 1988, which perched on his wrist, similar to how Shipwreck came with Polly the Parrot and Spirit came with Freedom the Eagle. So Voltar's vulture never had a name, but it seemed like kind of hard, part of his whole shtick, like the name Voltar, the guy with the vulture. So I don't know why the club did not repaint Freedom in black and with a red head and give us a new vulture for him. It seems like a pretty obvious thing they should have done, but they didn't, which is kind of a bummer. But anyway, Voltar himself is a great figure. I really like it. Now, before I go, I do want to just quickly talk about the other figures that were available at the 2012 convention. Um, because every year, besides the box set, they always have some unique figures that they have for sale at the show, which are a total surprise to people when they show up. They're usually just announced like the day before the show. And uh, people like me that don't attend the show don't have a chance to get them at all unless we buy them on the secondary market. So, two of the figures... So this here is Footloose, and version 5. Now, the original was released in 1985. Footloose is a fan favorite character, so a lot of people were happy to, uh, to get this, this figure. Now, this was actually the figure you got that year if you joined the club. So not anything to do with the convention, just if you joined up as a club member, which costs about 60 bucks a year, and that gets you the newsletters and access to their store and all that sort of stuff, you get a free figure. So Footloose was that figure, so I got him in the mail in a little plastic baggie. But at the convention, that's usually where they make the uh, free membership figure available on a card for the first time. So to collectors that like to keep their G.I. Joes displayed on their card, that's usually a big deal to be able to get these figures carded. So that figure was available at the 2012 Con. I don't care about carded figures, so I didn't seek out a second version of Footloose. I'm happy with this, this one here. And another figure that they had is the Cobra Stealth Paratrooper. Every year at the con, they would um, throw a bunch of figures off the roof on little parachutes and allow kids to run out and catch them. So it's like a parachute drop. It's an event they always do. Sounds fun, but I've never been able to attend, unfortunately. And so what they did that year is they took this version of the Cobra Trooper. Um, and this is the Cobra Trooper version 18 from 2012. It came from the Retaliation movie line. And basically, they just released this figure in solid black. I think he still had the red goggles, but otherwise, solid black. And uh, with a Cobra parachute, and they threw him off of the roof. And so, that was the parachute figure that year. So, these are the last two figures I want to tell you about. So, what they usually do is they have a like a two-pack available at the convention most year, which is kind of like a, a versus two-pack. Um, and then they have a three-pack of troopers. Um, so this particular year, the three-pack was of the Cobra Annihilators. So this is another member of the Iron Grenadiers. Um, the original figure was released in the 80s, and he looked a lot like this with the purple and orange and the helicopter backpack. He was a very cool figure, so to get a three-pack of these was pretty sweet. And I do think this figure looks pretty cool. Um, the thing I like least about it, though, is that they gave him the lamprey head, which has that kind of clear visor, and you can see the guy's face underneath. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. The original toy just had a solid purple visor. You couldn't see any sort of face underneath, 
and I kind of like that better. It leaves it a little more mysterious. That was actually something that really bummed me out about the uh, the Lamprey figures. So here's the Lamprey, and all the versions of the Lamprey have this clear blue visor, and uh, the original figure just had a like a solid painted visor, and you never saw the face. So that was a huge bummer on the Lamprey, and so it's kind of a shame they reused it and had the same problem with the Annihilator. But uh, it's not a bad figure. Uh, if you really hated it, you could like paint the visor or lift the visor off and stick some cotton swabs or something in there if you really didn't want to see his face. But uh, yeah, I still like it a lot. I didn't get the three pack. I just bought a single one off of somebody from eBay and that was enough for me. Uh, then from the two pack, so there was Dark Lawn. Now this is Destro's cousin and he was he's a pretty crazy figure. The original was released in 1989. I never had it as a kid because he came with this weird vehicle and I was still buying all the single figures in 89, but I wasn't really buying all the vehicles. Um, but this is another popular character, and this guy came in a two-pack with a new character called Sergeant Major. Um, so that was a brand new character. It featured a Destro body with a Sergeant Stone head. And uh, this pack was pretty expensive on the secondary market. And for that reason, I didn't want to shell out the money for Sar for uh for Sergeant Major, because he was a character I had no ties to, and even though he was kind of neat, he wasn't all that cool looking. He didn't have a unique head sculpt or anything. But I really did want this Dark Lawn, because the Dark Lawn had a new head. Um, other than that, he's mostly just Firefly pieces. But uh, I like this guy a lot, and so I did get just the one. It was actually uh, Vanessa, my, uh, my now wife. She got me both these guys for, for Christmas that year, so that was a nice surprise. Yeah, so I like these guys a lot. Dark Lawn actually really got very expensive on the secondary market. Uh, I think he's cooled down slightly uh, in recent years because the club did release another version of Dark Lawn down the road, and he was a little more accessible to people. So once this figure came out, I imagine the prices on this guy might have dropped a little bit, but you never know. They might have went up even more. So there you go. Those are all the figures from the 2012 convention set. So that is my review of the 2012 box set, Operation Bear Trap, from the G.I. Joe Collectors Club. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or any comments, please uh, you know, comment below. If you like the video, like, subscribe to the channel. And uh, as always, thanks a lot for watching. And if you want to see more videos like this, um, like specific reviews of sets, um, please let me know. And if there's a set in particular that you want some more information on, uh, let me know. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.